war. Planes and ships, bombs and bullets. But since ancient times, there's been another tool. Animals, beasts of war. For Hannibal in the third century BC, it was elephants, his version of a tank to break through enemy lines. In World War I, carrier pigeons, one bird flying 25 miles and delivering its message before dying of its injuries. Today, uh, we're driving in to go see a very unique Navy program that's been around for about 40 years, but it's only been declassified since the 90s. And this is a really rare opportunity. It was extremely hard to set up. Uh, the Navy, understandably, is, is very sensitive about access to this program. The Navy says what you're about to see is the best protection for a ship or a harbor against an attack. It has the finest sonar in the world, and you can't see it coming. The Dolphin, what the Navy calls the Mark VI weapon system, trained to find and identify a hostile swimmer. The Navy has seen firsthand how vulnerable their ships can be at anchor. 17 sailors were killed when the USS Cole was attacked in 2000. Two years later, U.S. intelligence warned of possible Al-Qaeda attacks by terrorist scuba divers. Divers these dolphins are trained to detect. Today, as part of the Navy's Marine Mammal Program, dolphins are actively deployed to protect nuclear submarines on the east and west coast and can be sent anywhere in the world in 72 hours wherever the enemy threatens. Now, I'll be that enemy diver. I've come to the Point Loma Naval Base to see if I can beat the dolphin at its own game. My opponent will be one of the more than 75 dolphins stationed here. But before I can test this dolphin's skills in the water, oh, yeah, <laughs> a little care and feeding. I gotta feed the animal that's gonna hit me. Yeah, it's yeah. full service. Uh, we're looking at calories or the energy that the animal needs to be able to be healthy and do his job real well. So this animal's getting probably around 9,000 calories per day compared to you and I that might be 1,800 to 2,200 calories. And 9,000 calories adds up to a lot of restaurant quality fish. Usually it takes a good sailor about two minutes to make a bucket. You're going to have to pick up the pace. Uh, yeah, going to pick up the pace here. <laughs> the mammal program is comprised of hundreds of trainers, veterinarians, and Navy sailors dedicated to keeping the animal in optimal shape. Like any other combat system in the Navy, prior to deployment, they're subject to maintenance and inspections. And before we get out to get to work, what we're gonna do is what we call a body check. Uh, we're looking for attitude, appetite, and appearance. Let's go take a look. So the handler's taking a look inside the animal's mouth. He's also taking a look at the animal's eyes while he does that, making sure that this dolphin's real clean. So now that this dolphin's looking good and ready to go, then we can go ahead and beach him up in the boat, get out and go to work. Dolphins have been working for the Navy since the 1960s, when military researchers first started investigating how their sonar capabilities could help naval missions. We're going to be able to train this animal to assist us in various ways in the sea. The Navy quickly realized that they could train mammals to perform missions. They've served in Vietnam and the Persian Gulf. Today, the U.S. is one of a handful of countries in the world which acknowledges having an anti-swimmer marine mammal program. This was something I was aware of from my time in the active duty Navy. But now, I'm about to experience it firsthand. It's unprecedented for the Navy to allow what I'm about to do. Now we're going to actually get in the water and put this thing to work. So. Today on the bad guy, simulating that I'm a combat swimmer trying to attack a port, a harbor, or a ship, and they're going to release the Mark VI, the dolphin, and see if it can find me in the water. Essentially, I'm the crash test dummy for, <laughs> for the dolphin. Oh yeah, you're ready for an episode of Man vs. Dolphin. Swimmer interdiction dolphin catches a ride from its pen to its patrol area and is ready to go to work. 
Hundreds of yards away, armed with an inert mine, I'm getting ready to face off. Here's the mission. I'm about to enter the water. I'm going to attempt to head to that ship right over there as if I was going to make a combat swimmer attack on that ship. The dolphin's out patrolling, and we'll see if it intercepts me between here and the ship. Good to go? Good to go. Utilizing a low-profile combat side stroke, I'm on my way to the ship. But the dolphin is on its way to me. Playing the role of a terrorist in San Diego Bay, I'm trying to evade a dolphin that's trained to find hostile swimmers. Not gonna make it. She's gonna get out of nowhere. There she's got it. I got about say 50 meters from the ship behind me, and then boom! Came and hit me right here. The dolphin hits me with a marker that alerts armed security to my presence. There's a brief second where I thought I was going to make it through. Next thing you know, I was staring a porpoise right in the face. Oh, just got me again. Oh, oh, oh. In a minute, she's back on her boat and getting some TLC. I guess my, my combat ship attack foiled again. Undaunted, I try underwater with my scuba gear on. Here's what the camera on the dolphin saw. Underwater or on the surface, the dolphin finds me every time. So how does she compare to saying, suppose you had a, a side scan sonar on the bottom of this boat? What, what's the difference? She's able to pick out details about an object that we would only dream to have on side scan sonar. And she can do it at great ranges with 100% reliability. The dolphin is looking for a swimmer like me. So she's gonna hit this ball right, right there. Yeah. Once, she's, once she's sure that that's a swimmer, there she goes. So she just touched that ball right there. Now at this point, Taj, we're gonna have to get that out of the way of the handler. He's gonna go back in there and let her know, hey, good girl, thanks for keeping your eye out for us. He's gonna let her know she did a good job and he's giving her the marker. And there goes the marker. So now she's on her way, like a shot, as you know. You know, it's a, it's a pretty good little bump. Yeah. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Dolphins' jobs go beyond what the Navy calls swimmer interdiction. It turns out they're very good at not only finding people in the water, but also things. Things like mines. So the animal's using its echolocation, looking out in front of the boat. Brian Dury supervises operations for the Marine Mammal Program and works with the Navy's Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit. Over time, we uh, had to train the animals to discriminate between, you know, it could be a, uh, a lobster trap. Oh, sorry, I got a positive. Right now, the animal just went positive. All right, so what's she doing now? Right now, she's carrying the marker down to the mine cave that she's told us she's found. Uh, that means the marker has deployed. The diver's gonna go down, go to that anchor, and then do a circle search, verify that the animal has found the target. In 2003, the Navy performed this operation in wartime, deploying mine-detecting dolphins to a rock to ensure safe passage for humanitarian ships, meaning some of these dolphins are actually Iraq War veterans. What about danger to the animal? You're asking them to go get close to explosive devices underwater. Um, mines are very complicated, uh, high-grade machinery. They're not set off to go on uh, dolphins. They're set off to go on ships. Even if the animals are safe, the Marine Mammal Program has been criticized by animal rights groups who claim the work exposes the mammals to undue stress in an unnatural environment. And how do you respond to people who say that they, the animals shouldn't be confined, they should be in the wild? We recognize that, that people have concerns, and, and we're happy that people are, are concerned with the welfare of animals as we are too. Everyone who works on this project in any capacity is an advocate for animals, and that's their top priority. They wouldn't be here. Um, 
it's it, it, it's something it never leaves our mind. The program's first dolphins were captured in the 1960s. Now, though, dolphins are raised from birth. Today, the program also uses sea lions that were abandoned in the wild or bought from SeaWorld. Both animals receive top-notch medical care. In return, the sea mammals can not only save lives, but can save millions of dollars. The Navy does a lot of uh, training for war fighting, and one of the things they do is they shoot torpedoes, they drop sensors. Sometimes those end up at the bottom of the ocean during those training exercises. So the question is, how do you recover them? All right, so we have Gus here. Um, he is almost 10 years old. He's a trained Mark V animal. Um, he can dive up to depths of 1,000 feet. Um, but right now we're just going to do a little deck demo over here and show you what we actually um, do underwater. Gus is taught to pull on the cable to make sure he's made a secure connection. And then you guys will reel in whatever. Uh-huh. Yep, go get it. He can recover up to 40 items per day. Water. And his buddy Joe is so well trained that even I could recover a test option. Ow. Joe just made me look good. He <laughs> did everything we talked about, and now he gets a little reward. The Navy has also trained sea lions to use clamps to recover not just objects, but people. I got in the water one last time to see how sea lions, as well as dolphins, can conduct swimmer interdiction. The result? The same as the dolphin. <laughs> Caught, but with a twist, a clamp that attaches to my leg. But there's no hard feelings. Good job. Thanks for not hitting me too hard. Thanks for being gentle. For the dolphins and sea lions, it all seems like a game. Just got me again. Find the target, get some fish. But for their handlers, it's much more. An unlikely partnership between humans and animals that right now is the most effective way to guard our nation's top maritime assets. It's a tradition in the Navy for sailors to salute each other as a sign of respect. As I closed my time with the Navy Marine Mammals, I was saluted by this unlikely warrior. Good boy! Working every day to keep the nation safe.